There I am in one of the most remote parts of the country. It took me seven hours, including three off-road to get here. Miles away from the nearest human, with triple digit heat and zero cell service. All to take a picture of this rock. But why go through all that trouble? Death Valley is completely sheltered from light pollution in every direction, making it a Bortle 1 sky. The rare combination of clear skies and no moon in a Bortle 1 is where astro portfolios are created. The problem is, these conditions, by definition, can only exist in the most remote places on Earth. And if you're in the eastern half of the U.S., you're pretty much out of luck completely. Now, I have a theory, and I'm definitely not the first to suggest this, but my theory is that even if you find yourself in a heavily light-polluted sky, by simply shooting towards a darker sky, you can still capture beautiful Milky Way images. Tonight, I'm putting that theory to the test on the beaches of Malibu. Here we are. El Matador Beach in Malibu. Always been one of my favorite places to come and apparently it's one of everybody's favorite places to come. We've got wedding pictures, baby pictures, birthday pictures, but I highly doubt that anyone is here for astrophotography. So I'm assuming these crowds will go away once the sun goes down and uh, we'll have a little bit more room to roam and uh, not a lot of people think that you can get astrophotography in Malibu. Obviously, it's close to LA. There's plenty going on on the coast. But just as important as the Bortle zone that you're in, I think this is like a Bortle 4, technically, maybe even a 5, uh, is the Bortle zone that you're looking out into. And obviously, there's not a whole lot of lights over the ocean. So I think we're going to get a pretty good Milky Way exposure. I'm pretty optimistic. I'm thinking. I'm thinking a very, very simple, simple shot. Maybe a couple of simple rocks in the foreground, uh, like an end of the end of the world type, end of the edge of the planet type, I should say. Look, uh, I think it should be pretty awesome. As soon as the sun goes down, the moon's gonna go down at about 10:30, um, and uh, we're gonna have an epic look at the Milky Way. So we'll see what happens. So I went down to the beach to completely ruin my tripod with salt and sand, and maybe find some compositions. All right, so I like I like this area over here. I think I'm gonna put the 14 millimeter on and try to get some test uh, compositions during blue hour, uh, just for a safety net. Make sure at least I have something in case the focus stacking is impossible, or in case the tide comes in so far tonight. Speaking of the tide, uh, that we actually can't shoot a foreground. It's gonna be most likely. I'm thinking a. A portrait orientation and the Milky Way should be kind of straight up and down at about 11 to midnight to 1 a.m. right in that window there so I'm gonna get some nice 14 millimeter foregrounds and uh, we'll see what happens I want to take a moment now to thank today's video sponsor myself this beautifully color corrected slow motion shot at 120 frames a second does not come cheap. Photography is a dangerously expensive hobby that I would never recommend to anyone. So please like the video and subscribe to the channel so I can make another one. In all seriousness though, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting on the few videos that I've put out so far. It's really, really inspiring and it makes me wanna work even harder to create better content. So thank you. Here we are. On the beach, uh, the tide is coming up. It's pretty high, so I'm probably gonna end up using the uh, blue hour foregrounds that I got. Definitely uh, a little nervous with the tide coming up and all my most expensive uh, gear out here, but I'm doing it for you guys. I spent the next couple of hours shooting as many long exposures as I could before the tide came in. Now, the real challenge here is to find a way to shoot a 15 second exposure without the camera moving. What makes that so difficult is that every time a wave would come up to the legs of the tripod, the sand beneath it would shift a little. And if that happens during the exposure, then the stars are gonna show up as light streaks instead of pinpoint dots of light. So 
You really just have to press your tripod into the sand as firmly as possible and hope for the best. Luckily, I was able to get enough exposures of the stars as well as a much longer exposure of the foreground to create this image. I always have to pat myself on the back a little when I come away with pretty much exactly what I set out for. I wanted to get an edge of the planet type minimalistic image and I think this is pretty close. I'm really surprised and pleased with how the Milky Way came out as well, thus proving my theory correct that the border zone that you're shooting into is almost as important as the border zone that you're in. Now here's a blue hour composite with another shot of the Milky Way. I'm a little conflicted with how I feel about this image. Uh, I initially really, really liked it, but sometimes when I look at it, I feel like it's a bit top heavy. I'm not sure if the reflection in the water is pronounced enough to balance out the image, but I love the textures of the water in the foreground and I do like the reflection and I really love how the Milky Way came out. I'm not sure if it was just a better exposure or if my editing was a little more on point for this one. Uh, but I love how the Milky Way looks, I love the colors, I love how the stars pop, uh, and overall, I think I like this image a lot. As the night went on, the clouds started rolling in. I was able to get a nice exposure of the clouds and combine it with my favorite blue hour foreground to get this. I've always been a fan of a partly cloudy Milky Way. The diffusion from the clouds and the overall atmosphere that they provide make for what in my opinion is a dreamlike, magical image. I actually wrestled with this one quite a bit in post. I'm a big fan of this foreground composition so I really wanted to make it work as a composite. It was the first photo I started editing and the last photo I finished editing. Sometimes I need to let the edit rest for a bit and then come back to it when I feel like I can make it work. And I gotta say, I really like this result. It is a bit of a different style than I'm used to, but I definitely think it's dreamlike. Here are my best three images from the night. I use this really cool app called SmartList to frame them and put them side by side. I really love this app. You can put your photos in different frames and interiors ranging from bedrooms and dining rooms to the lobbies and art galleries. I'm really proud of all these images. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best and why. Going from left to right, photo one, two, and three. If you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Do me one more favor and like the video on the way out, and I'll see you next time.